All right, folks, back in the Boston Man Show. Live here, Coach Tony Pujo, friend of the show. North Alabama Lions, out of the A Sun, just beat Kansas all State this past weekend. Coach, good talks as always, buddy. How you been, man? Yeah, oh, man, great, great to be on here with you. Obviously, always great hearing from you. Um, and just excited about, about this year, man. I know uh, we got to be thankful for a lot of a lot of things, and uh, with all the adversity that. Uh, you know, that life has not only hit us, but all our student athletes, uh, just fortunate and grateful that we, that we have some type of assembly of a, of a season. So uh, just thankful, man. And again, thankful, obviously, to be here with you. Now, Coach, let's go back to March, man. Your season's already over when COVID hit, which is my, my birthday, March 11th, when everything kind of got shut down. So how was it for your guys going home, not coming back to campus at all, and having to be away from your guys and kind of keep them sane when you can't touch them every day? Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that was the challenge, right? So uh, we, we had to find a way to communicate. And here's the thing. There's no guidebook on this one. Oh, yeah. You know, there, was no, there was no, we can go back to, you know, this happened 10 years ago and this is what people did. Like, uh, man, everybody's writing their own chapters and, and their own stories and their own books on this one. So what we try to do is we try to kind of get ahead of the curve and, and try to communicate with our guys on a regular. Now, one thing that we do in this program is we, our, our staff does a really good job of staying connected with our student athletes, with our, with our players. Uh, I try to do a good job of staying connected. So, but we would also connect everybody together. So obviously, man, I'm sure if nobody had stock in Zoom back in, in February, they should have been because- We'd be a rich sure, coach if we bought some. <laughs> oh, ain't no, doubt, ain't no doubt about it. So, you know, to me, I think we've utilized Zoom a lot uh, with our players, uh, with our staff. We did a lot of staff meetings, obviously. Uh, but let me tell you, we were fortunate. We had the guys back on campus in June. Our university made a commitment to, and, and, and to kind of, since again, there was no guidebook on this, uh, we kind of started creating our own guidebook since you know we could bring the guys back in June, we started to create the guidebook on testing, uh, on social distancing, you know, the things that we talked to them about, washing their hands, di disinfecting their area, uh, you know, no large crowds. Uh, so since we had them here in the summer, we worked them out like, you know, at the, at the beginning it was two to a, two to a group. Um, then we increased it to three and luckily had no zero cases in the summer. Now we're fortunate. We're off in a, in a, in a corner here of, of the North uh, uh, Western part of Alabama. Oh yeah. Not a lot of traffic coming through here. So we didn't have a lot of cases. And I think the families uh, of my, of the young men that I have from Atlanta, from Chicago, uh, they were thankful that they had like a little safe haven down here where they, they kind of stayed away from the COVID. Oh, yeah, I had a cousin that went to North Alabama years ago, so I know how about going to go to Florence from oh, kind of cut over there. It's, 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 hard, it's hard to get to. It's not easy to get over to Florence. Let's try to get, get over there to you guys. Hey, I'm always saying, if you if you come into Florence, it's because you're coming to Florence, because you're, <laughs> you're not going to Memphis and cutting through Florence. You're not going to you're not going up to, to, to Nashville and cutting through Florence, and you're definitely not going to Huntsville or, or Birmingham and cutting through Florence. If you're coming to Florence, it's because you got to stop here. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. And now, Coach, uh, having you guys on campus, how was it trying to get them academically set? Because I know when you go from virtual learning to being in class coach, I would be horrible virtual. So how was it for your academic advisor and your assistant coaches to make sure your young men grades stayed high amidst all the uncertainty with COVID when it was back home next spring semester? Yeah, there's no question. That was another challenge of ours, right? Uh, because all this is new. And even as a staff, it caught us by surprise with a few of our guys. And and, and I'll be honest with you, we learned some lessons with it. And, and the lessons I think you, you, we learned is that not everybody learns the same way, right? So there are guys that can pick things up quickly and they can do things virtually and they're fine. But there's some guys that really need that connection. They need that one-on-one uh, -on -one contact with their professor, right? Spending that extra time. Uh, so that was a challenge. And, and again, because Zoom had its limits on how long you could be on a, on a call, uh, there were times that our guys were limited uh, and, and professors also limited to, to how many, how many, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations they can have. So yeah, it presented a challenge for us, but I got to give it to my guys uh, because just like in the game of basketball, when things happen, you got to learn to adapt. And the ones that adapt are the ones that, the ones that adapt quicker are the ones that su have success faster. So we talk to our guys constantly about that is, 
you know, our game is unlike, unlike a lot of sports, like, you know, with football, you huddle after every possession and, you know, uh, you know, well, maybe not now with, with, with the two minute warnings and all that stuff. But, <laughs> but, but my thing is normally you get to huddle and our game is like hockey, right? It, it's just back and forth. All the time. But we got to adapt quickly. Uh, so we talked to our guys constantly about that, about adapting and moving forward. And I thought our guys did a good job early on. I thought they, a couple of guys struggled, but they learned how to, how to move forward after that. And coach, I'm asking you about this for being a leader. For me, coach, I'm 33 years old. I've interned six of them who are 18 to 21 years old. I had to be like their psychologist, their leader, their father figure, their everything, because, you know, they're here in Atlanta going to school, and their parents trust me to look out for their kids. So I had to kind of take on a bigger role in their lives than I usually had. So I've become a better leader because of COVID. How about you, Coach, trying to lead young men through a hard time, a lot of stuff they don't quite understand, maybe the way you and I would. How's it been for you trying to, as your leadership, grown over this 2020 year? Well, you know, to me, I've been saying since day one, JR, that for, for us, this is always going to be a player-driven program. Our guys are going to be guys that have got to be in charge of this organization. And, you know, I, I want them to take the mantle, right? So for me to help them, the first thing I think I needed to do was, number one, uh, I needed to listen. I needed to open up my ears. You know, that my, my dad used to tell me at a young age, you know, that's why God gave you two ears and one mouth. He wants you to listen twice as much as talking. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so my thing was, I thought I needed to hear my guys. And we created a platform, and I think we created an environment that allowed that, you know, that allowed them to, to voice their, their voice because th these were different times. I mean, think about what they were hit with. It wasn't just COVID. You had the social unrest. Mm -hmm. You had an election year. You know, you, you had all this, the, 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 just the, the polarization of our country. Uh, you, you just had so many things going on and they had to juggle all these things am amongst the pandemic. Yes. Which is scary as it is. And, and you're seeing, they're seeing people, not even people inside their, inside their circle being affected, but they, they're hearing constantly through social media, through the news of, of the, you know, the, the death toll and, you know, obviously for us, we, we feel for all those families that have gone through all that stuff. So I can imagine an 18 year old trying to process all that. Oh yeah. So I think what, you, what we needed to do was just open up a platform where they can speak their mind. Listen, my guys know that they're going to have a voice and then we're going to collectively as a team, make a decision on what we're doing, uh, from, from kneeling, uh, uh, from, you know, from what are we going to do as far as practices? Uh, do we want to offer options for guys to opt out if, they're, if they don't feel comfortable? My guys had all those options. Like I told them, if, if you don't feel comfortable out here, if you feel like our medical staff is not doing what you need to tell me that first. And then if you don't still feel comfortable with what I'm, I'm giving back to you, then you got to do what's best for you. So I wanted our guys to have that autonomy. To, to make those decisions. And I'll be honest with you, uh, thankful for our medical, medical folks, thankful for our leadership at the, with the athletic department, our leadership at the university. Uh, they've done a tremendous job of keeping our, our, our student athletes safe. And Coach, speaking of the connectivity of your team, you feel like those talks about the social unrest made your team closer? Because for me, Coach, hearing my interns' backgrounds made me be more in tune with them going forward. Now I know really their core and their base, their foundation. How, how's it for you hearing your guys' different stories, different perspectives, discussions you all had? How were they? I can only imagine what it did for me with my six interns, what it did for your whole team having those talks on Zoom this summer. Well, it's, it's like I said to you earlier, uh, I needed to listen, okay? Because here's the reality. JR, I'm, I'm, I'm a son of two Cuban immigrants, okay? I'm not, I'm not a black man. Okay, I'm a Hispanic man, okay? And now that doesn't mean that my family hasn't gone through, you know, through, through some injustices. I mean, I come from a country where you had a dictator, mm -hmm. okay? Now, what we saw, what I grew up in, wasn't black or white. Ours was rich or poor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Oh yeah. So I grew up in a poor neighborhood in Little Havana, Miami, Florida, okay? So, and there were Cubans that 
they had money. Oh, yeah. So there was some injustices going on through the same poor people. Just oh. we were different. We were, we were different. Same money. thing, different, same thing, different race. That, same that's all it is. Yeah, that's all it is. So that part I can connect, but I don't have the history of some of my black athletes who have lived and listened to their fathers, listened to their grandfathers and grandmothers, listened to their aunts and what they went through in the 60s and the 50s and the 40s and the 30s. Like, I, I don't know that. I don't have that history. So that's the part that I was telling you, that's where I needed to open up my ears. Oh yeah. I needed to listen. And not only did, it, did we speak to our student athletes, but we also spoke to, I'll give you an example, Wendell Gunn. He was the first, he was the first black student to graduate from the University of North Alabama back in wow. the 60s. Wow. And he went from graduate, the first graduate here, all, he worked in Ronald Reagan's administration in the White House. And he's a board member here and he's, they got a building named after him and he lives here part-time in the, in the summer. So wow. I sat down with him and I asked him about how life was here when he was on campus. Wow. And the insight, JR, that he gave us, priceless, priceless. And that's, that's the type of stuff that has been discussed in our organization here with our, with our, with our players is we all got to listen to each other. Yes. But the reality is, and, and listen, I know you hear a lot about Black Lives Matter and then the people say all lives matter and all that. The way I equate what's going on in our country right now, yeah, all lives do matter. But that being said, that's like if I have four kids and one of my kids gets in a car wreck and she's in the hospital, okay? And she needs, she's in intensive care and she needs help, okay? My other three kids' lives matter, but the one that's in the hospital, oh, yeah. she needs my attention right now. Oh, yes. And that's what we have to understand about this scenario here today is, yeah, all lives do matter, but my black brothers and sisters right now are in critical care and we need to take care of them. Oh, yeah, coach. And you know, coach, my father's 80 years old. So, and my mom's 70. So, they grew up here in Atlanta doing when Dr. King was around. So, I have mm -hmm. firsthand stories of how it was here during that time. And for me, I feel like, coach, I have a, a duty now to do more than I have been doing because of what my parents have this year has spent a lot of time telling me about how it was here when they were younger. And so, I grew up like you did, coach, the, in Vine City, right in the shadow of the, of the Georgia Dome. Very, very poor community. For, for me to get out and come to where I am today, Coach, I feel so blessed, you know, that my parents didn't have a lot, a lot to give me as a kid, but I never let it hurt bring me down. And like you, you got out of Little Havana. I feel like we're two examples of how you can over, overcome a bad circumstance and also can use our platforms and our success to help others and listen and grow a lot of people's minds listen to us more they would somebody else and bring people's hearts to say, hey, okay, it maybe it is really a problem we need to address. And that's not just hearsay or something that they're, that they're saying. Well, I'll tell you this. When you just shared with me your story about your parents, it brought chills to me because to, to know that they were around with a man like Martin Luther King when he was around and, 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 the, and the change that, that he made because – to me, guys like, so to me, a person like Martin Luther King, Muhammad Ali, Mother Teresa, these are people that put dents in the universe, man. They, make, they, they really have made changes that impacted a lot of people's lives. Like, I love the fact that, that your life has been impacted because of that. And to me, we have to understand we're resting on the shoulders. We're right now standing on the shoulders of those people that are carrying this, this weight that have given of themselves to better our situation. So, you know, when you talk about your parents, 
to me, your parents gave you, you had a front row seat on how to move forward, on how yes. to how to how to overcome resistance. Like you had a front row seat, like I had a front row seat. Right? Mm -hmm. Adversity's gonna hit you, man. But you okay. saw you 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 saw firsthand the the the, the your your the people that loved you the most, how to overcome those resistance and that adversity. So believe me, you're right. You should be blessed and, and feel blessed that you had people maybe couldn't give you all the all the monetary stuff you wanted. Just like my parents, they, they did the best that they could, but they left you a drive that has propelled you where you are right now. And that that's that's kudos to you and your family, man. And coach, I feel blessed. I can take I can take care of my parents now with this radio show the Lord has blessed me with because you know, who would have thought a kid from Vine City living the way I grew up would have a radio show that's nationally syndicated now, heard by from Chattanooga to Macon, plus other affiliates, man. Coach, I'm living a dream, coach. And I'm gonna tell you, coach, I had no idea the impact that my show had. So people emailed me and said, that JR, they, they, thank you for the show. So it's a break from the monotony. It's a break from the same old thing every day. So thank you for your, your story. The show people you have on your show is making us better. Thank you for, coach, I'm telling you, man, I never thought about the show was that impactful until COVID hit because people hit email me they're saying that the guests I have and the stories they're hearing is helping them get through this bad time. And uh, no doubt. And, and let me tell you, that's that's what we're here for. I think in this in this world, man. I think that's that's the way we got to we got to we got to just understand that we're a big we're a bigger we're we're just a small part of the bigger picture. And if we just do our part, man. Like I tell guys all the time, like my guys, you know. I talk to them about changing the world, right? Well, how do you do that? Like, how do you go out and just change the world? Well, I'll tell you how I think you need to start. It needs to start right here within your own heart. Yes, sir. Okay. So I think once you, are, because that's where the battle lies. We got to, we got to get rid of all the things because all of us have good and bad. We yes. all do. And what we got to do is we got to internally fight that battle, push the bad aside and then just make ourselves better. Then we got to go out and impact our local community. Okay, things we can touch and feel. So because we all know, like in my community, there's the west side of Florence. Okay, and to me, we all see it and we need to help there. And we need to, we need to go in there and, and put our resources there. Okay, to help folks. And if we're silent, we're really we're really the enemy of that. Oh yes. So my thing is my thing is take care of yourself, take care of your local community. And once you have that, just trust me, you'll start impacting the world because you're reaching to so many people, and that those people are reaching people. And that's the way it works, man. And hey, coach, opinion. I've decided to do that, coach. I'm gonna tell you, man. I've talked to Carmen Mascarello at Seattle about what he's doing, coach, coaches for change, and I, and I want to be do that here in, in in Atlanta to help the people in my old community, Vine City, East Atlanta as well, because you know, it's a, it's it's it's, it's a definitely a split, no, a, a highway I twenty. It's like Buckhead is this way, but when you get flat below I twenty, you know it's it's this it's despair, and and I see it. And I want to address that, and like you said, Coach, make the parts of town that's not desirable better because everybody sees the Buckhead in downtown, but they don't come over right by the over, across from the, the dome is Vine City, English Avenue, where I grew up at, Cleveland, Cleveland Avenue, East Atlanta, Gresham Road. So we have to make those parts of Atlanta, bring them up, uh, up the snuff, get them to have better stuff. So, I, Coach, I'm with you, man. I see it, and it's in my heart to make the city of Atlanta better in 2021 and beyond because of things that you saying right now, what my parents have told me and what they put in me in this, this charge they gave me the rest of my life to make a difference in the city. And I'm going to do it, Coach, no doubt. 100%. I'm with you there 100%. And like I told you, if we see it and do nothing, shame on us. Shame on us, man. Okay? Because the reality is, we all know this. We live in one of the richest countries in the world. Yes. You can't tell me, you cannot tell me that we cannot help every single person in our country and in this planet if everybody connects. You got that right, coach. You know what and, I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, coach. You got that right, my brother. And, coach, let me ask you this, this quick about this week, Jacksonville. How has it been 
playing back to backs. Tell me about that. I know that's new for you guys this year. I know it's to, put, to prevent travel, of course, make it all safer. How has that been for you? And how was coaching on that second night, second night after night one of giving your energy, all that energy that, on that first night there? Well, I can tell you this. You're right. There is some positives to there is some positives to us going playing back to back and going to one site. But I want you to know you got to be careful with it too, because when you're playing back to back games within 24 hours, your guys better be recovered because that's where injuries can happen. Oh, yes. Okay. So there's some positives and some negatives. So that's one of the things. If you look at our roster and you look at our, look, look at the times of our guys playing, not one of my players in conference play, really during the season, not one of my guys is averaging over 30 minutes a game. We, we are balancing as much as we can, keeping our guys under that 30 minute roll. Because when you're, if you're averaging more than 30 minutes in, on a weekend, trust me, you're going to feel it now. Oh, yeah. Now, the good thing about it is then you got five days to recover. You, you know, so now you're, you're, it's, it's a different type of setting. Now, to be honest with you, from a scouting standpoint, it's much easier because normally we would play on a Thursday in one venue and then we got to turn around and play Saturday in another venue, may have to travel, who knows, right? But it's two different teams. Now you only got to worry about one. You know, the only thing, the other part, the chess match is that 24 hours. The folks are going to make adjustments. Are you ready for those adjustments? And, man, I'll be honest with you, it's different, uh, but I've enjoyed it. Listen, I'm just thankful, to be honest with you, through this COVID year. I'm just thankful that we're hooping, man. Just thankful oh, yeah. we're hooping. <laughs> the last one I got for you, Coach. This may be some congratulations with your time with me today. Tell us me your COVID, your quarantine hobby. My was playing the guitar. I'm a guitar player now, Coach. I, I, I can do it pretty good for you. What was your hobby this time in quarantine? Man, listen. I've already seen every Netflix show. <laughs> I've, I've already I, I worn out Disney Plus with my kids. I've already I, I've worn out uh, uh, what's the other one? Amazon Amazon Prime Video. So. I'm like a movie guy, but I'll tell you what I also did. I also broke down. I, I watched, I went back, watched every game last year of my team leading into this year, looking to see what the things that we needed to do. And then not only that, but then I also started catching games from teams uh, that were playing this year. I watched a ton of their games from years before. So I, I did a lot of preparation for my team as far as, you know, getting them here in June. What are the things we were going to do? What are the things we were strong at? I wanted to continue to strengthen. What are the things we needed to work on that, that we felt? So we identified a lot of those things. But, yeah, I would have to say, man, you, you played the guitar. I wore out Netflix, man. I, hey, listen, I got my money's worth. Ain't no doubt about it. You got that right, Coach. I hate I missed you guys. I remember you played here this, this last weekend. I was in Nashville. I was talking to my man, Matt Driscoll. I wish I knew you was coming. I would have stayed in town. He had, well, invited me up to Tim play at Lipscomb up there. So I was like, man, I said, man, I just I just missed you this week. I really didn't realize you was in town this weekend. Well, uh, I'll tell you, it was uh, this, this league, I'll tell you uh, this, JR. This league has not only got good players in it, uh, but it's got great coaching, man. Uh, you know, obviously you got a team like Liberty who's already gone out and beaten two power fives. They beat Mississippi State. They've beaten um, uh, South Carolina. Uh, you know, you got – and then and then you come into the league and, uh, you know, they're splitting with with uh, Lipscomb. You know, they're, they're splitting with Stetson. You know, it, it just shows you the type of league that it is. You know, it, it's just very, very competitive, and, and it's earned – I think it's earned its its uh, respect. You know, uh, Liberty's done a great job in the last few years. Lipscomb's done a great job. North Florida, great job. But but man, I'm also going to tell you, uh, you know, Coach Amir's got. It, 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 I know the record doesn't look like it, but trust me, he's doing something really really special down there. He's building it. Uh, you know, you got Bellarmine just joined the league. You know, they they they're bringing they're bringing a, a different style. They're bringing they're Bring some players. You got Florida Gulf Coast, obviously one, one of the powers of this of this league. So I mean, up and down Jacksonville, like I, we can go on and on, man. Uh, every team is just is just you got you got to bring it every every weekend because if you don't, they'll make you look bad. 
Now, Coach, best thing about all y'all are great guys. You know, all you are great interviews. I love talking to all you guys because you all are great to talk to. Always open for me, and I appreciate you guys because you all are nice to me all the time. So I think I can glad and cover you all, give you a legal platform because you all are great people and great schools and great players as well, Coach. Well, I appreciate you saying that, Jr. Listen, uh, it's it's just fun being around you, man. And, you know, you you bring that energy, brother. I love it. You know, as soon as I saw your face. It, you know, you just light, you lit up this room, man. You know what I mean? So to me, this is easy. This is this is an easy one. No doubt. Well, coach, as always, thank you for your time, coach. Be blessed. And uh, do you play at, at this come coach or you, are they coming to you? They're coming to me. Okay. So, yeah. So the ones we got left, well, we got Jacksonville coming in. We got to go to North Florida. Um, we got we got to figure out Florida Gulf Coast. They they got into it, they had a COVID issue. Uh, when we first started, and unfortunately couldn't play them. Uh, but I think we, you know, the league right now is trying, we still have our bye week, so we may sneak them in there. Uh, and then the last three games that we finish with, we got Liberty coming to Florence. We have to go to Bellarmine, and then Lipscomb finishes up down here. Well, Coach, I have a house in Dashville still, so let tell me which way you want me to come to, and I'll see if I'm free, hey, and, and I'll do it. Sure. You never need an invitation over here. You just let me know when you're in town, and we'll take care of that. Cool, cool, cool beans, Coach. Hey, Coach, thank you so much, Coach, always, buddy. You be safe, man. Same to you. All right, see you now. See you, buddy.